Hello everyone. My name is Argama Witch and today I'm going to do another V-Ray tutorial and possibly my last V-Ray tutorial. And this one's going to be on hair and it's going to be, I'm hoping, an in-depth talk on hair because a lot of people seem to have the biggest issue with hair and uh, that's what I'm going to deal with. Um, so I'm going to come at this as if you don't really know too much about it and you know where we can go from there. So on v -Raid Studios there's a hair tab here. Uh, it's the second one in and on here is where we can add hair to our model. Uh, so you'll have uh, over on the left hand side um, three tabs and mind you this is for version 0 0.14.0 every version they change names and update things and I unfortunately am not going to be able to keep updating this for everything but for the most part they tend to keep things pretty much uh, similar uh, but they have design bones and texture tabs we're gonna start with the design tab uh, at the first uh, slot is uh, presets and presets are hairs that you've imported in um, and they'll just like appear on your model or you can make a particular hair and you really like it you can save it and it'll save up into presets so you can load it in on a different model but we're not gonna worry about that today um, or ever um, I already have a tutorial on that one anyways we're gonna look at the hair groups so there's a procedural hair group um, which if you click it you're gonna get something that already comes down it's like it could be a group and there's gonna be various settings that you can adjust like how many hairs and everything's gonna be very uniform um, I'm gonna just delete that real quick and then there's the freehand group in which you can take the brush tool or the pencil tool and then draw in your own hair uh, but again I'm gonna delete that because we're not using that yet but those are the two types of hairs we're gonna be working with and if you don't see like procedural group, make sure like um, isn't oh yeah, make sure you're on the select tool and then you can do it. Uh, here's our little toolbar. We have a select tool which allows us to select hairs and stuff. Our uh, pencil brush which will allow us to draw in hairs. Um, I'm gonna just kind of undo that. Actually, no, you know what? Let's keep that in. Because then I'll, I can show you the retouch. The retouch is kind of like, it allows you to sort of like redraw it. If you mess up, it'll always add more points, which you can see the points here. Um, it, there's no way to really subtract these points. You can only really add them in. Or if there is a way, I don't know how to do it. Uh, but for the most part, I don't usually touch the retouch tool. It's the other three that we're going to be worrying about. Control points will allow you to grab a point and adjust it to where you want it in case you went a little too far or you just don't like how it ended up coming out. Um, I usually work with fewer control points if at all possible unless it's a long wavy hair piece and I need to kind of like adjust it so it kind of looks, you know, wavy a bit. Um, but regardless, uh, that's the basic of these. Um, actually, real quick, let me add this. So if you have a group here, you can right click and you can rename it and you can rename it here. New. Save it. And now it says new. Uh, you can toggle visibility. So if there's a hair here and we toggle the visibility. It'll make it go away, and you'll see the icon there, and you click it again, it'll come up. You can actually just click it, you don't actually have to right click, but it is an option. Or if you have more than one hair, and you just want to disappear one, you can just grab the one hair you want to disappear. Uh, sometimes if you're working with multiple layers, you might want to hide a layer while working on the next layer before bringing it back. Uh, there's smoothing, which will kind of smooth everything out. Uh, there's duplicate, so you can have two of the exact same uh, layers. There's flip, so it'll flip it on the opposite side. I think it's the x-axis. I think it's x in here. It should be x. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, the delete button. If you're, you know, you can right click and delete and then you'll have nothing. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, a procedural hair group and 
the menu that's over on the right hand side. So between both of them, you're going to have uh, very similar menus. First things first is this little icon up here in this top corner. It's the mirror icon. And that means whatever you do on one side will happen to the opposite side. So right now if I pull this out, it just pulls out one side. If I hit the mirror, it's going to pull out both sides. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Right? Um, here's the material groups. Right now we only have one, and we have it as blue. Um, and you'll notice that I don't have the shading or highlights. Like, even though the colors are here, it's not on. Because I turn them off when I'm working. I find if you have the shading on while you're working on it, it makes it more of a challenge. So I usually turn those off, and you can do that over in the general tab, where you have the rim lighting. So, you know, like that. I'll turn that off. And then there's shading, which usually is somewhere like around here. And I'll turn that off as well. I prefer to kind of add my own shading in there. Sometimes I might use it, but very rarely. Um, but here you can have as, as many materials as you want for hair. So we have blue right now, but if we duplicate that, we can then change this to a different color. And we have a different color. Um, and if you want to change the whole thing, sometimes you can just click the procedural hair and click it. And I'll change the whole thing. Or you might just want to uh, select one by one and change the colors you want. And that's how you get multiple hair textures. I do have a tutorial on it, but you know, we're going over it again. Um, so as far as these right here, the base color is the red. The shade is going to be if there is, um, if you're using the generated shades, what color that'll be. So it's set to default to purple. I tend to put it to white because there is no shade of white because it doesn't multiply and white doesn't show up. Highlight will show what the um, rim lighting and like the little highlights are on here. I don't have it set up on here. I turned it off um, and to ensure it stays off, I turn it to black because you can kind of see a little bit, but I want it off completely because I just want to focus on the shape of the hair. And then the outline is if we decide to put an outline on the hair. I don't normally, but you can and it gives it a nice effect. Um, now I'm going to make sure that I have not one hair selected, because if you have just one, it's just going to show you what you can do to that one hair. But instead, I'm going to select the whole group so we get the full menu so we can move on. Now, we have a texture parameter, so you can go and edit the textures later, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and this allows you to make them narrower or wider, you know, expand it how you want. Allows you to move the highlight position up and down, and the offset, which means being that these are like tubes, uh, it's how it's going to be wrapped around the said tube. Um, and this is all from preference. And usually when I do this, I'll make sure that offset's different on each one so it doesn't look too uniform. Because if it does, it, I don't know, it just doesn't look good to me. Um, hmm. I'm going to go back and just turn these to blue because I don't like working with multiple colors just yet. All right, let's just work on that. All right. Um, and now we're gonna move on to the hair parameters. And this is gonna be basically uh, the size of each individual hair. So like you can make the, the thickness bigger so uh, it'll be you know wider as width. Uh, and then the thickness is like going in the opposite direction. So it's thin and it's thick. And um, yeah, it's just sort of a matter of preference and what you like uh, and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, they have a twist so you can twist your hair. This looks pretty good for like crimping hair. Um, if you're going to layer a bunch, it looks pretty good. And then you have like the placement of like how high or low it is. A lot of these is just you learn through trial and error. Um, oops, I didn't mean to deselect, but I can just click on the procedural group again. And there's smoothness, which is like how many uh, sharp angles there's going to be. How many planes, I suppose. Uh, it tends to look nicer the more you have, but it also might run a little slower. So I kind of keep it at the default around 20. Um, so... 
the cross section is what the hair looks like on the side. Let's So, like, you have a hair that comes down like this, but when you look at it from a flat view, it's going to be kind of like a diamond, or at least if you select the diamond one, it's going to be. You also have triangle, which it's really hard to see on this. But you see how it's a little flat on this end and then it pokes out on this end? So it comes out like this. And then you have unfilled triangle, which is kind of flat, it just doesn't have that base. This is the one I tend to use when I make animal ears. Um, and I think there's just flat after that, if I remember correctly. Triangle flat, yeah, and the old bottomless wood, yeah, that doesn't really matter. So yeah, those are your basic four. I tend to stick with the diamond shape uh, for the most part, unless, again, I'm doing a specific thing. Uh, the curve here is what the shape of your hair is going to be from the side. <clears throat> So if, if this part here is looking at it from this point of view, then the other thing, the um, curve, is going to be as if you sliced your hair in half. So if you have a hair like that and if you slice it in half, choo, this is your curve. That part's your curve. And um, they have some preset ones, like straight, so it's kind of very straight. And you can adjust it from like the tip of the hair to the base. And you can adjust it however you want to make some interesting effects. And if you click on the line, you can add more. Yeah, you make yourself like a little jellyfish looking thing because this is what the side looks like because we cut it in half. So <clears throat> if we looked, let me take this down to one hair right now. Oh, just one, please. So if we look at this, uh, you can kind of see how this shape on the bottom half is the shape of the hair. We have the sharp top comes down, which is right here. And then it like uh, pulls on in to a little point area. And then we have a, like a small flat area that's slowly getting bigger. And then it zips back out into like a little point, it's like a bell shape. And this is pretty useful in making uh, particular designs and shapes. And sometimes you can even make the hair itself kind of like an interesting, like, mm, I don't want to say like a fin shape. Uh, just interesting patterns, you know? It's all a matter of just playing with it and seeing what you like. Uh, for the most part, I stick with Fluffy. Um, the next thing down here is we have the guide parameters, which is like this outside thing. Uh, this mesh. And height's going to tell you like how high it is, and it'll also shrink how many guides there are. I tend to prefer to work with less guides, but you can go really long. And if you need it longer, you just grab it and you pull it longer. But for the most part, we'll probably be sticking with something short today. Uh, next is the offset, which is how wide it is sort of coming off the head. So if you want something that's closer to the head, you might want to like the offset a little lower or wider. And you can just pull it in like if you need it in more, being like, whoop, there. so. I, for the most part, offset doesn't really do too, too much. Now, for some reason, the default of this um, always has it fit to head Z, which basically has this part like kind of like sucked in a little bit. So they're not... Um, yeah, you see how it kind of pulls in? It's trying to, to match this face, and I don't particularly like that. And they have it for excess... Two, which pulls it in. Uh, so I tend to do it to zero so then I can adjust it to how I want it. And if I want like the back side to pull in while the front's not, I can just undo the mirror mode and then come in with the points and pull it in. And then let's say I want to do the sides. I'll just pull it in with mirror mode back on. 
Oops, I should have turned mirror mode off when adjusting the front. That was a my bad. That's a mistake I make quite often. Even I make mistakes doing this, and I've been doing this for a little while. <clears throat> yeah. Now, since we're working on procedural hair group, uh, everything that we just talked about up here is the same between procedural and freehand. And then afterwards, it's a little different. So procedural has this uh, new menu, and this allows you to adjust how this procedural hair is going to uh, look, since it's sort of, you know, pre-made procedural. No. Uh, the first is the length, is like how long it's going to be to the tip of the mesh, and we can make it shorter if we want. Position is where it's going to uh, kind of start, if you will. Intervals, which, here, let's, let's add the, the hair count up a little bit. So, position, you can see where it's kind of sliding the start position. Intervals is how far between each hair. Uh, Z allows you to move it along the Z axis. And X along the X. Uh, for the most part, I don't really bother with those. Uh, hair count will allow you to go as few or as many hairs as you would like, up to 20. Uh, the hairline will uh, make sure that the hair doesn't go to a point at the top. And uh, I use this when I'm working on hair lower, that's lower in the head, so that way we don't need as many points. Uh, hair, so this used to be named something different, but instead they've named it hair chunkiness and it's just one, two, and three. They don't even have it named. But it's just gonna do like various thicknesses of the hair and how random it is and where it starts. Um, I don't, I can't really tell you which one does which. It's kind of like, it, it's more of one you just play around till it looks good. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't even know if it's still the same as it used to be. Uh, so there's a hair part which separates, like, uh, the centerpiece and just kind of stretches it out so you can kind of get this part. Um... And it says how long it is, so, you know, if you have more hairs, you can go longer. But for the most part, I don't think I've ever gone, like, maybe more than that. <clears throat> uh, and then there's, like, a side part where you can kind of see that it's sort of, like, adjusting, like, how to, like, pull it apart a little bit. So it's sort of like an X and a Y type of thing. Um, I don't usually mess with these. Most people I know don't usually mess with these. Uh, end of hair arcs is kind of like, well, as you can see here, how it's going to arc. If you want hair to kind of like taper down or to pull up. Uh, you can do that with the hair arc. And it does have its uses. Uh, I tend to use it more towards longer hair, so it comes more towards a point at the end. Uh, hair cascade is kind of like this, um... I think it used to be called like something else, like a twist or something, or but it, it basically just pulls the hair around the head in like different ways. It's kind of a neat effect, but I don't know how practical it really is. Oops, I unclicked, select the procedural group. Uh, and then there's another one where it kind of pulls it back. This one I've used more so, where I want things to kind of, again, pull back into a point, into a taper. And then there's like cascade on the sides and stuff where it, it dips down. Yeah, I there, there's a bunch, uh, and, and they do just slightly different things. I, I feel like it's not really necessary, but to each their own. Yeah, and that's a hairstyle, I guess. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Alright, so now that we've looked at a procedural group, we're going to turn off this procedural group 
And if you select the base here and you do a freehand group, it's going to be the default. And you can see the uh, everything's default here. But if you had selected the procedural hair group, and let's look at this again. Let's say we have it like kind of out a little bit here, and then it like pulls in here like a like that. Okay, something that's very drastic, and you can see the difference of. Now from here, if you did like a freehand group, it's going to keep the same shape as the group that you were just selected when you did the new group. So if you're on the base, you'll get the default. If you're on one of that you've already made, you'll get that. Which is kind of useful. So you don't have to redo it again. Now as you can see, there's nothing new to really add over here, but you'll need this brush. And you can do this with um, a mouse or a tablet. Um, I have both, but just kind of, you know, I'm going to show you. And I have the mirror tool still on so we can um, see, you know, so both sides get the same treatment. So it's very symmetrical. And as I usually do this, I adjust thicknesses and width as I go along because I don't want hairs to be the exact same. So I might make a really wide one, and then I might make some really tiny ones. So things are kind of like more realistic to hair. And doing this with a mouse is a little bit more challenging than doing it with a pen. I'm doing it with my mouse right now, so just to sort of show that you can. Um, for the most part, when I do the back of the hair, I tend to use procedural, and the front of the hair, I'll use a um, the pen. Now, this isn't too bad, but let's say I want to adjust it. Now, after the fact, we just go back over to select, and we have these points of the mesh that we can adjust to where we want. And sometimes it's just little adjustments like this. It's it's not a terribly quick process. Um, it can be if you know exactly what you're doing and you come in with like a game plan. But for the most part, for me, this is the longest process is working with hair. A lot of trial and error. And that's the basics of putting hair on a model. Uh, let's uh, do a quick thing about... Uh, bones and textures, and then we're gonna go into more complicated uh, hair. So let's go over to textures first. Um, so as before, we have the two different hair textures. We have the red one, and then we have this blue one. Um, and again, I'm going to turn the shade to white and the highlight to dark. And I'm going to turn the base to white because I want to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to make my own hair texture because I don't really like the hair texture of V-Roids. I don't think they're good. I don't like the way the gradient looks. And I know why they do it because putting it on white makes it so anyone can change it to whatever color. But overall it doesn't look good in my opinion. So I usually recommend for people to kind of make their own. Um, and since she has purple lips, we're going to go with a purple. So I'm going to start with a, a nice base color. And if I turn the mirror mode on, I can get both sides at once and save me some trouble. Now, this might be a little bit too bright, so I'm going to go down and... Yeah. And there are many ways that you can... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to change the thickness. Um, there's many ways that you can kind of adjust your hair texture to make it look like how you want and how you want to paint it. So I keep the base on a one layer and then I have this other layer and you can keep adding layers over here with the plus button and any new layer is always going to end up at the top and then you'll have to move it to where you want. But over here we have our brush properties which you know select the color you want. Um, we have different types of brushes. I tend to work with the hard brush and the soft brush. These two other brushes I've used in the past, but they're not the best. Um, over here on the side where we had our other buttons, we have the select, the brush, the eraser, and a blur. I've never actually used the blur before. <laughs> Maybe I should one day. 
but I just usually tend to do my own thing. Over here we have the thickness of the brush, which is how big, you can see how big this brush is, it's huge, and we can go really small and go super small, so it's tiny. And then we have the opacity of the brush, so this would be like a solid, and this would be uh, not as solid. And that is usually really good for blending. And then you have layer properties where you can adjust the opacity, you can, uh, you know, multiply, lighten. It doesn't really, lighten doesn't work with black, but you know what I mean. So it's just mostly your how to do with air. Um, and you can see that it shows up here on your hair as you're working on it. But let's, um, let's do a quick uh, hair texture. I'm going to take the dropper tool and collect my base color and then just a little darker. And I usually like to do a... Oh, I have the opacity down the middle. I usually like to do like one long streak and then a couple of short streaks. And this is kind of what I do for a... more of a 2D style hair. Because I, I like the 2D style. Ultimately, I feel like that's kind of the style, uh, at least of VTubers, that um, are more uh, appealing. I feel it might not be the right word, but more popular. Whatever, man. Look, it's what I like. But there's some people who do some really great 3D work. So I'm just sort of doing like some... But normally I'd do this in my art program. Uh, but for this, you know, you just you're going to see how I do things. And I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit and try to blend in a little more. Yeah, so you can see it's like not as dark. It kind of like fades a little bit. And I'm going a little fast on this, so do keep in mind that if you're doing this, I would definitely go slower and get the hang of things. But I, I just kind of want to move on to the next step a little bit. But I still want you to sort of see how this works. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of like add some lights in here. And I'm constantly going back to the the dropper tool in order to grab more colors uh, that I already have in there, so I can kind of keep things similar. Then I might do another layer. I might just take like uh, I'll take a blue. And I'm gonna make sure the mirror mode. No, I said mirror mode. I want off, please. And I'm just gonna color like a chunk in, like half a chunk, with blue. And multiply it and kind of lower it a little bit. And then maybe use that softer brush to kind of blend. And this allows me to have like a slightly darker underside. I'll do a linear brown. It's a little better, a little dark. Yeah. And granted, this doesn't look too great, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, but at this point, I would go and I would adjust my hairs. So we have a, the freehand group, so I would turn the width down, the offset to rotate the darkness to the back, bring that highlight position to maybe more of where I want it. And then I might just like offset a little bit here and there to kind of make it so it's not as intense of a repeating pattern and then if I have like a hair that I want that's supposed to be in the back I can rotate it to that darker color or if I just want to have like uh, alternating texture look I'm gonna add a little bit of dark here and there and as you can see that base hair is still white there's no real way to edit this unless you take it into unity um, so a lot of times I recommend just turning it off by hitting the little eyeball. Before I get into hair styles that are kind of 
more advanced. I want to get into a few accessories that you can do with hair because hair in this is pretty powerful. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do animal ears, which I have a tutorial on, but you know, it doesn't hurt to do it again. So I'm going to move a little faster through this. So we had a, a, a freehand group. I'm going to take the Z down. I'm going to take the height down. I'm going to make sure that I pull the center of this hair down into the scalp and about where I want like the edge of my ears to go. I'm going to start pulling the outside up and out because you can do that. And I just sort of adjust this in where I kind of feel comfortable for these ears. And then I turn off the mirror mode in order to pull in the front and half because we don't want the ears in the front but we want to pull it back. The only problem with the, this mesh is that you cannot really go past the center point with a stroke of hair. Uh, I mean you can but like like you can't pull these points past the center point. Alright so this looks good for where I'd want the that and I turn off the mirror mode and now I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna take the bottomless triangle and I'm going to go over to straight on the curve uh, straight on the straight on the curve and this seems to be like a pretty decent cat ear shape and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to do bloop and now we have a basic cat ear it doesn't look like much now but once we uh, increase the thickness and the width Nani? What's going on with this? Oh! Okay, well, let's, let's delete this. Alright, um, if you select on a hair group, which I completely forgot, you can adjust things for that hair group, but then when you go to brush, they're not adjusted, so you're gonna have to readjust again, and that was just the mistake I just made. But it's an easy fix. Alright, so the generic cat. Perfect. Not perfect, but if we uh, are selected on the freehand group, we can move the thickness and the ratio down because that's a little too much for us and our liking. And then I'm going to kind of adjust out where the, the ears go. And we're going to make the thickness a little bit more. And then when we go to each individual one, we can adjust the thickness as well. I'm going to bring it up to 50% on each. Like that. And now we kind of have like hollowy cat ears. Into I'll do it on white. Maybe it'll be easier to see. Not really. <laughs> but you can kind of see where the inside and the outside is. Um, if I'm going to do ears like this, I usually will duplicate it. Let's uh, put this back to red and we'll do a purple. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll duplicate it. And on the duplicated one... I tend to shrink it a little bit and pull it forward and I change the color. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and I turned off mirror mode so it's not going to affect the back as much. And what I'm trying to do is get it inside. I'm also going to make the width, not the thickness, a little smaller. And this is going to help me give the inside color of the ear. So maybe we want it like a pink or something because you know they have different colors and then I might add tufts of hair coming out to just you know make it look better and also reduce the thickness a little bit to pull away from the back but yeah and then if I go to bone them I'll make sure they're selected together um, and that's usually how I do a basic animal ear um, if you want, let's say, is that a freehand group? Let's say you want like a dog, you would just maybe round off the tip a little bit. A 
dog or a wolf, I think. Um, put the mirror mode on. I think they kind of have the same sort of shape going on. It's, it's a little difficult trying to do difference between like dog and cat. They're very similar um, when it comes to the mesh. And, and you can adjust things afterwards. So like, I might pull up the tip a little bit. I might make it a bit rounder towards the top. And then just do the same for the other side. And that might be like a dog. And if you want a cat, it would, I mean a fox, it would be a lot like the cats. So you just make it longer. And since we've inverted this, you're going to need to make sure that you're working on the inside if you go to adjust anything. So if I want to work on the control points like that. So if I try to work on it from out here, it's going to flip it to the back side here because that's where it thinks it is. Uh, these might be a little tall for fox ears. Oh, maybe like that and maybe a little wide in them a little bit. Yeah, so that would make a fox ear. And then if you wanted like a rabbit ear, you might want to um, just adjust this so it's kind of more of a round, thinner shape. Kind of like that. You know, it. it's all about just messing with this curve as far as the shape of your ears go. Similarly, let's go back to a base hair or a base shape. Let's say you want uh, horns. They're going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, I can think of like a few different types of horns that people tend to like. Uh, I will go with Um, let's do the triangle shape. We're just gonna kind of like go like that. So you have like ram horns that kind of curl around. Uh, these aren't very thick, so we can always just adjust the thickness of that. And if that's not good enough, we can also adjust it individually. And then we can pull in the top here in order to make sure it's attached to the head. Uh, other horns you might want to have are like little little demon horns where I'll pull out the uh, outside. And I'm going to do it kind of in like a straight line. Just like little demon horns and you can adjust the thickness of it um individually you can also adjust the thickness so there's two ways of adjusting it and if you really need it you can go outside the boundaries let's make this not as wide <laughs> these are awfully wide Do I still have it as a diamond? Yeah, I'm gonna do it as a diamond. I think these would look better as a diamond. Yeah, now you have like little demon horns. Um, and I think the last one would be maybe a unicorn horn. And we can do that by Pulling this out. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little smaller because it's easier to work with when they're smaller, in my opinion. Uh, and decide where you want this horn to start, and then you just pull the mesh up. A lot of this is just don't be afraid to, to mess around and try things. Now, we're not gonna want two of them, so we're gonna turn that off. Um, I'm gonna have it like have a slight taper and I'm gonna make sure it's a diamond. I want this a diamond shaped and that looks good and I'm gonna just make sure this pulls into the forehead. 
And now I can thicken this up a little bit, maybe the width a little bit. And then I can sort of adjust where I want these points if I didn't quite like where that was. And if I really want, like, I can add a little twist to it to give it more of that unicorny, horny look. So th that's basically how I would do it. If if I wanted these horns elsewhere, I would adjust the mesh to be there, like I did with the horns here. Same with the animal ears and such. Uh, and that's kind of the basic of doing animal ears. You can do tails too, which I talk about in another video, but it's uh, basically just moving the mesh down to where you want it. For right, for this particular one, being that hair can be used anywhere, I wouldn't use it to make an entire outfit because that's silly, but um, you can use it to like add tails, add belts, add, I don't know, ribbons. But for now, I'm going to stick to anything that's attached to the head because anything that's down there, you need to go and um, bring it to Unity. As mentioned in another video, you can make things like earrings. Uh, you just kind of pull the mesh to where you need it to be. Um, I wouldn't put anything on the mouth, so I would I don't put beards on the mouth through hair. I do that through... Um, just drawing on the texture. So let's say I'm going to give like an earring on that ear. Uh, I might want to drop the sharpness down to make it more of a tr or the smoothness down more of a triangle because like you can make it smoother but I kind of want it, that diamond shape you know. And then just adjust the thickness and the width to match what you're looking for. And if it's not in the right location you just adjust it. And that's how you would make accessories. And you can do like hair things as well. Like, um, maybe you want like hair clips on or something. And, and mind you, I don't have hair on the character right now because I pick and chose which direction I was going to uh, do this tutorial and I didn't think it through very well. <laughs> she didn't have like hair clips or whatever. And like, uh, just make sure it's over the hair. And there are even times where if you want, you can just do a nice uh, flat texture. We'll do it straight. Like that. And then you can go over to your texture area and then I would make sure this is a new texture and not one you're using elsewhere but you can just draw on a thing you want and now you have like weird hearts and if the shape looks a little weird or if it's distorted uh, try adjusting the uh, the width and the offset and then the other width and the well you don't really need the thickness it's not gonna do anything um but yeah sometimes like this could really help just stretching it out or maybe you just want to narrow it in and then you grab control points and you can move it around to where you need it and you can have little hearts on your hair it's 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 all just uh, tri trial and error, man. Trial and error. Um, now let's let's get rid of this, and now we're gonna do a couple of hairstyles. I was debating on doing hairstyles or not for this, but there seems to be a few hairstyles that really confound people, and most of them seem to be spiky hair. So we're gonna do that for her. I'm gonna do some updo spiky hair. They're by no means simple or quick, but they're a hairstyle. Um, so the first thing I always do is I remove the fit to Z. So you'll see me do that to everything. I get a lot of people ask me like, they're like, I, I can't seem to get the hair to spike up. And, and like we did with the animal ears, it's the same thing. You're just going to move the mesh around and you're going to have multiple meshes and do not be afraid of them. It's fine. Uh, let, actually, let me, let, let's start with the procedural hair group and I can get just like a base down. Procedural hair groups work pretty well for this. Uh, let me get like, uh, that. I'm gonna thicken up the base a little bit. 
and I'm going to position it towards the back of the head and I'm going to make sure it's the interval kind of covers between the two ears kind of like that and I might just do like a little spike starting here and I'll take the hairline down all the well as far down as it's going to let me before it gets weird Ooh, I didn't mean to do that at all, but that's fine. There we go. It's spiky. Um, and so spiky down like this is pretty easy. And then if I want, I can just duplicate this layer. Or even if I did a uh, clicked another procedural, it'll come up with the same. It, it'll just basically duplicate it, which I can show you here. So we'll go procedural. Now it's the same. And then we can just adjust and we're just slowly like spiking it out. Uh, one thing I, I would normally do, and I'm going to do that here, is uh, I adjust the hair chunkiness to each one differently. And I might add or subtract a hair count to just sort of offset things so they don't look exactly the same. Oops, I want the top one. The hair chonkiness, please. Uh, I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to make the interval a little smaller for the bottom one. And as we get uh, further up on the head, I might start pulling them out a bit more so you can see them from the front of the head. You don't really need it out too far in the back, but in the front definitely or on the sides definitely all right and we're gonna just gonna keep uh i'm basically gonna keep duplicating this one th hair group because it's already gonna follow the shape that i want it to and i might just start getting to a point where i want to start making that hairline a little longer kind of like pull it back in uh, once i get around to the where the ear is i start to switch the uh interval to make it a little longer so I can bring it around to the ear line. And I'll still pull in at the top. And I might want to thicken this a little bit using uh, the hair parameter. Maybe thick thick instead of with thick. Yeah. And now at this point, I'm going to start slowly moving it so it goes upward, so we get more of that spike spike. So I'm going to pull this in and kind of get like a little bit of that. I might actually pull this hair in too. Uh, and sometimes you can just click on the hair and it'll jump to that layer, which makes it a little easier transitioning between the two without having to worry too much about it. Alright. <clears throat> and I'm still going to keep copying the same hair group I have, and I'll just adjust things as I go along. But now we're starting to move up and out. So now, where before we were on the outside, we're starting to be on the inside of the hair mesh, which is fine. Um... You can go the other way if you really wanted to, but you would have to be pulling the top part out. Uh, I think this works just fine for what I'm trying to do. And it might look weird on this particular character, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna adjust some hair chonkiness. Maybe add another hair. I kind of want to fill them all the way. Alright, I am pulling these in because I want it to slowly go down. The hairline needs to come in because it's not touching. There we go, it's now on the scalp. And I always start with the back of the hair before the front of the hair because you can often get distracted by the front of the hair. <clears throat> so it'll look a little weird for a while, but don't worry. We'll get there. Alright, and uh, again, we're still going with the procedural hair group. <clears throat> the same procedural hair group. It's very useful 
and it makes things a lot easier. But now we're going to start getting into some very weird anime-ish hair. Uh, normally characters like Naruto don't have their hair this long. Um, but I want to start <clears throat> tapering it more into a point. So I'm going to go over to the arc. Remember this arc we had? Yeah, like that. And I'm going to kind of pull this forward and up and make sure the center ones are down. And we're going to keep going with this procedural hair group. I'm going to like pull this in. Definitely start pulling this in from the back. I'm going to drop some of the hairs because I don't need that many anymore. I'm going to pull the interval in and position it more in the center. We still have uh, adjusting the hair chunkiness and then the arc is good. Now this this mess down here is sometimes hard to like follow. So um, if you need to organize it, uh, for the most part, uh, we're not going to need it for this. I'm actually going to drop this down to maybe that and interval it a little. Yeah. All right. Um. We're gonna procedural hair group one more time. So now look, we've already we already have like a good number of groups, but we're still going. Uh, so let's add another one, and this one's gonna be a little different. So this one's gonna pull in towards the center, and I do have all of this hair grid down here that's kind of like a mess. And if I get too confused, I might just be like, ah, screw it, let's get rid of it. So I'll just be like, uh, delete, and then I'll just do a new hair group. Uh, make the height short, get rid of the Z. And I want this to kind of follow the head because I now want to start to merge the front and the back. And this is where a lot of people like sometimes have issues with is they don't merge their hairs or that part seems to elude them. So that's what we're doing here. And I have freehand group, but I can easily turn it to a procedural. Um, once I get things where I want it. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to do a procedural based on that freehand group. And I can delete that freehand group if I want. Uh, it's just a little easier to see it sometimes without all of the hair in the way. I'm going to do some chunky. The six is fine. The position needs to come over here. And I want the arc tips. I'm gonna pull this in, and I like uh, some thickness on there. So we're we're just pulling it in a little bit because I, I I'm trying to get it to eventually go over the head, and the next one might do that. Sorry, even sometimes I get lost in all this. All right, like that, yeah. But we're gonna pull this in a little bit too. This is just mostly making sure that our scalp gets covered. And there are parts where we might miss bits of the scalp. Like you can see over there. I'm going to adjust it right now. But we can always go back and color the scalp in. So then you don't have to worry about it. Alright. So like that. And now we have some spiky ass hair. And you can keep going with like the procedural. And if you get to a point where you're like. Uh, let's see about like here. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's say we want to add some on the side. So I'm going to take this one because this is, this is a pretty good spot to start at. And I'm going to go add a freehand group, pops to the bottom, and I'm going to make sure I pull out the mesh so it's going around the scalp. And now I'm going to just take uh, my brush. I'm going to make sure I'm on a diamond shape and I'm going to make sure it's fluffy. If you are on fluffy and it's a weird shape, just click off of it and then click it back on. This uh, this program's a little weird sometimes. Uh, and I'm also going to give it a tipped start. And I'm just going to like come up from here and then just swoop in to start 
filling in some of the gaps here. Um, then I might add another freehand group. Again, I work with a lot of freehand groups. I'm going to turn the height off. I'm just going to kind of slowly match some of these. that are in the back, just a little bit. And just do a couple to match, and then I'll have another freehand group. And it might seem like, well, why can't I just do it all at one? But it doesn't really, doesn't really work that way. But it's fine. This, this way it works too. It's just a little more time consuming. And we're just slowly pulling the hair up. And I'm gonna pull the back in. I'm just gonna do some like little spiky pieces. And I have the mirror off so I can kind of do asymmetrical spikes. Maybe one coming forward. And you can use uh, this particular technique in order to do hairstyles such as uh, Naruto or um, Deku, Vegeta, I don't know, name your anime with spiky ass hair. I think that's okay for the back spike. I can, this one I might add in just one more procedural hair group to kind of really jut it up, you know? Get it towards the center, maybe make it a little smaller, maybe even jut forward a little bit. I'm getting really, uh, that character from My Hero Academia whose name escapes me at the moment. The, 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 the Red Riot guy, I don't, I don't know his name. That, that's the vibe of this hairstyle. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, and like if I really wanted to, I can even like take this procedural hair group and I can uh, go about it in a. Let's let's rotate it. We're gonna uh, position it on the other side, and we're just gonna pull it inward. To kind of give you that little bit of spike in the front. It's a little funky, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little funky trying to get the hair to do what you want. And sometimes it doesn't always work and you just kind of have to settle for doing something close enough. Uh, but for the most part you should be able to get mostly any type of hairstyle you would like. Now you can see how many hair groups we have. This is a freaking lot. There's hundreds of hairs here, but it's okay. We're not done yet. I didn't mean to do that, but it actually, you know what? That's fine. It works. All right. Uh, now I'm going to just do the front of the head uh, real quick. I'm going to kind of frame the face a little bit. Um, and then I might kind of offset something to just kind of... Yeah, and I'm going to just adjust this one hair to pull it back up in, so it all flows from that one area. And uh, let me just pull this out and give it a little volume, you know? And I'll pull this in, and then I'll pull the sides in. Clicking the freehand group while hitting the points will show you all the points, which is fine. You just grab one and you can start working with it. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to pull in and try to cover as much of the scalp as possible because we don't really need it. And usually try to get all the hairs going to a central point. Now here's your crazy ass anime hair. It's weird, right? Yes. Yes it is. Uh, boning hair like this is a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, 
Now, uh, right now it's not going to move. Uh, if you want it to move, you gotta add bones to it. Uh, the thing is, is if you add like a huge group like this and you add a bone, which is your, uh, select the hairs you want and do a create a bone group. You can select an individual hair out of this group for it to follow, but the problem is, is that when it walks, it's going to move from that one bone and it's going to be all of those hairs. So you can see it's moving from here and they don't move individually. And sometimes that's okay, um, especially if you're not using too many bones or the bone's not too high up. Uh, for me, I don't usually do that. I usually try to stick to two hairs, no more than four hairs, and the four hairs have to be way in the back with only one bone in it. But for the most part, two seem to be fine for me. And so over here you have the bone count. And this is going to tell you how many bones are in there. It's, it's how many joints to move this. Uh, I tend to go somewhere between three and maybe... <sighs> three and five on short hair and up to ten on longer hair uh, but so for uh, for this like I don't want the hair to start moving all the way up here I want it down here because I want this to be kind of more stationary so that's what the fixed point will do it'll adjust where this ball which is the start point uh, will start where the movement is so for example let's take these two hairs and we have it all the way up here, but this one's all the way over here. Now we're going to go watch the character walk. And you can see how this is flopping all the way from up here. So it doesn't look like there's hair attaching it underneath. Where this one only moves just right here at the tip. And I tend to go with something more like that. Because usually you hair groups and it comes from all directions. And so it's not going to flop straight from there unless you're bald completely under here. Uh, so I'm going to adjust that down there and put it down to two because I don't really need more than two. Usually wherever two hair joints kind of meet is where I decide to put the fixed point. Um, as far as the other things on here, we have the stiffness, which is how much it's going to move. Gravity, which is if gravity is going to affect it and it's going to drag it down. Uh, sometimes messing with gravity will really get the program janky. Um, I've had it where just a little gravity has sent a piece of hair off into a weird direction. Uh, yeah. Uh, and hit radius is, uh, so these round balls are little hit boxes and they're going to collide with the hit boxes in the face so it tries not to go through it. Uh, usually around the cheeks it still goes through because the hit box for the head's not around the cheeks. But um, if you make it too big, it's going to jut out like that because you have a big ball here and a ball here and they're trying not to touch each other so what you're going to want to do is kind of keep it in like a good range but this will allow it so things don't like shoulders and cheeks and stuff don't collide um so what i'm doing is i'm just going to kind of go through and add uh, some bones here. There's also a way that you can generate a bone group, which I might do for the back of the hair. I don't ever use it. I usually just go through the tedious process of all of this myself. Um, just because it gives me more freedom. But for this one, being that this looks like a pain in the ass, <laughs> we're going to do it. So what I'm going to do is bone group count. We're going to go... Oh, we have a... We're gonna go to do, 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 do 20. Now we're gonna generate bone group and see what happens. Now we let the uh, the program run. It might go not responsive, but you know, it does its thing. So let's give it a second to slowly do its shit. So it has made some groups and it looks like it has made. Um, A really huge group. All right, let, let's just see how this moves, okay? Oh, it also redid my ha my bangs. All right, thanks. <laughs> oh, oh no, that's that's not good. That looks weird. Look at how it moves. That, yeah, this is why I don't do that. 
Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna delete all these. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bone this myself, so... <sighs> this time lapse, I guess. Uh, on a side note, if you had made a hair group and you forgot to add a hair in there, like, there's this hair hiding in there. That one. Uh, you can select it and then just do add hairs to bone group. And now it's added in. That's pretty snazzy, I think. Well, that took a while, but here it is. There is movement to all the hairs. Some are grouped differently than others. Also, as far as the textures go, normally I'd adjust these textures because I'm not happy with this texture, but this is just for, you know, tutorial sake. I've, I've had people complain, being like, well, this isn't good. Like, it doesn't look good. Why are you doing it? And I'm like, well, because people ask, um, yep. But yeah, so normally I'd adjust the textures better and... I actually just use a different texture. Uh, but for this, it, it works for what I want. Which is to show you how to do crazy spiky, like, anime hair. Another really easy, well, another easy, uh, easy hairstyle would be, like, the, the Hime style hair, which is this flat hair. Um, and a lot of people seem to have trouble with this, uh, at least when it comes to doing the bangs. So I'm just going to kind of talk about that real quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a hair count of, I don't know, whatever. And I'm going to start my position to the side here. And I'm going to make the interval go all the way around to equal on the other side. Uh, maybe I'll add another hair. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new procedural hair group. But this time, I'm going to make the position start where the other one ends. Remove the interval down. Maybe remove the hair count down. And then I'm just going to take the length and I'm going to just bring it up. And it's like super simple. And if uh, you get to a point where you're like, well, I want to move something, you can right click on a procedural group and then change to convert to freehand. So at this point, we're going to take this and then we can move this one hair. And I really just want to adjust it like slightly to the side, maybe give it a little split. Maybe I want it to be a little uh, thinner. Just to kind of break it up a little bit, you know? I'm gonna move that one back in just a smidgen. Yeah, like that. And, like, it's super, super simple. Um, and I know some people get a little confused with it. Uh, but, it, you know, again, I'm just more like trial and error. You'll figure it out. All right, um, so uh, one of the problems is is like uh, slick back hair, um, which needs to ha be built up a little bit. So you can kind of start like this. I suppose it doesn't need to be built up too much. We're just going to kind of do like a little bit of a slick back, you know? Well, that this, this center problem came out looking like trash, but we can fix that with these points. And if we pull this off, we can kind of like tuck this in a little bit towards the, the hairline, but we can't go in too, too far, I don't think. It, it ends up like pulling in at the temples. Makes it a little bit of a challenge. But so what I do for this is I'll start with something maybe like this, and then I'll add another free hand group. I'm gonna start with a base free hand group. And then I'll pull it in to kind of where I want the hair to start slicking back, you know? And I'm gonna try to pull it up 
here so it goes over. So I'm trying to layer it. But I want it to kind of like merge around the top because if I do it too high then you're just going to have like a really high slick back and it's going to look kind of weird. Uh, I'm going to thicken this up a little bit. Oops, let me grab the... Uh, I think I'm going to thicken this up a little bit so it's not so much of a point. And then I'm just going to kind of grab it and pull it back. And pull these back more. And like that. I might pull it in a little bit so it's kind of like tucked in. But if we didn't have this other group, it would be kind of, well, I guess it's not too, too bad. But it's still like kind of a, a bit of a gap there. So I, I like to go in layers. Um, and then if I really want, I can just do a procedural hair for the rest of it. I'm going to arc the ends. Pull it in. And I'll probably make it not as thick, so it still kind of like comes underneath all that stuff. And this is where I can use kind of like the offset Z to pull it forward. And then I'm just going to try to round it out a little bit. This one's a little wide. I don't like what it's doing here, so I might even just turn this one off. And then you have like things like this, and you can come back up to this freehand group and try to add in uh, some more, or even this freehand group. Uh, and this one I might do more of a tapered point and I might start kind of swishing it around to follow this where it should go. And just kind of adjust. Let's see, I can pull this out to make it a little little wider than this. And this procedural hair group I might make it a little uh, thinner. And I might even take the offset in a little bit if possible without seeing any of the skin. Uh, sometimes you might get weird little artifacts like this where it's kind of battling each other and usually just adjusting a width or um, something because there's it's just overlaid two things that are overlaid on top of each other I guess it wants to be thicker all right well sometimes you get errors like that and you just kind of got to figure out how to deal with them I'm also going to adjust this particular hair to come back more over here and by using control points to do fine tuning on the hair because even if you use like a tablet it's not going to be perfect you need to fine tune and then there's this little one which is a little it's just a little fat we'll just like thin it up a little bit and we'll do the same on the other side because i can see that it's kind of poking through the ear too yeah and that would be like an easy way to do like a slick back hair which, the last two hairs don't really seem like they'd be that much of a challenge, but you'd be surprised. They, they can be a bit of a... a bit of a pain. And like, if you wanted to turn this into a pompadour, like, you're gonna kinda work the same way you're doing here. You just pull it out. You already have the back. You don't need to worry about the back too much. You've just gotta worry about getting that front going. I might even just take this, since I've already made it as a freehand group, and just turn it into procedural by making a procedural group to just save me the trouble. Uh, I do want the position to start on this side. Interval like that. Pull it in. Pull out this. Maybe adjust the Z a little bit. Well, I'm just kind of stretching it very peculiarly. And 
Look, I already know what a lot of you are gonna say when they see this because it's a purple pompadour. Look, I know. I know. So this is like a good base start if you're going for pompadour. Um, I would continue with uh, maybe at this point turn it into a freehand group to add the strands you need to kind of make it really work or even just to take the ends here because they're just going to kind of like all meet at the center um, and pompadours are actually like pulled out and tucked on in you should watch someone make a pompadour once it's an amazing mess so uh, they actually like tease their hair out and then pull it and pile it on top so it's all coming on in like this my biggest problem is going to be getting this to get it to where i need it to be because it's going around a curve but you just kind of work at it a little bit And again, like, I would spend more time on this normally, fine-tune it a lot more than I'm doing now. But this is just more of to show you how without hand-holding you, because I'm tired of hand-holding people. I'm willing to give you the knowledge I have to show you how to get it done to the best of your ability. And then you just use some of your own creative smarts in order to try to, like, put the two and two together, you know? It is like anything else. You need to learn how to practically apply it, the knowledge you have into this program. Which is why um, I was able to come up with a lot of things before a lot of other people did. Uh, because I was willing to take the knowledge that I had and apply it and not be limited to just what I thought I could do. And sometimes it would work out and sometimes it wouldn't. And it's fine if it didn't. But if it did... Uh, I learned a new skill, and if it didn't, I learned new knowledge. Like, I learned what I could and couldn't do, and maybe why I could and couldn't do it. Yeah, and at this point, you're probably gonna want to close up that pompadour. <laughs> so, uh, we have this freehand group we haven't been using, and I didn't close it off. I'm gonna pull it in to close off the pompadour. This is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to take my blue hearts for right now. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to make one hair down the center. Uh, I'm going to make it super thin. Super thin. Super, super thin. Um... Alright, that's why it didn't go thin. I didn't have it selected. Alright, so I want it super thin so it's basically hiding. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to go over to the bone group. And I actually don't want all of that. I'm going to grab... Just that part. I'm going to create a bone group. And then... 143, which is the invisible one we did. I'm going to set as the fixed point. I'm going to kind of do maybe two. And I'm going to pull it about to where the forehead is. These actually don't really move too much. I'm going to make the stiffness a little higher. And we're going to see. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now we got a little flaunt. And it only moves this like tip part. If we did the whole thing, it's going to start from either down here or up at the top, and it's just going to look weird. So, you know, let me show you what it would look like if we didn't have that invisible hair in there. I didn't mean to hit texture. Also, it doesn't matter what color you do. I did the blue, so I thought I could see it, but I couldn't see it. Alright, so here we're going to just do this one as the fixed point, as the uh, axis where the bones fall on. And this is what it looks like when it's trying to walk. Yep. See, it's a little weird. 
Uh, let's say we did the whole thing. Well, we have that bone in there, so let's turn that bone off. Actually, let's just remove this. Alright, recalculate. And let's say we have the fixed point, I don't know, back here. See what happens. Oh yeah, that's, that is, that's a thing of beauty. So it, it just, it looks a little funky in my opinion. Um, so let's go back and we'll just add that bone back in. Uh, add to bone group and then we're going to again make this our center our axes. I don't think I've adjusted it. Let me adjust it again. I want the fixed point to where the forehead is. Right about there. Yeah. So it's more of a, a flop at the end. Although again, you normally wouldn't have this type of flop. Man, she been getting some like interesting hairstyles today. Um, let's do one last type of hairstyle. Uh, so let me delete all these. So we're gonna start from scratch. And it's gonna be like the bangs that kind of come up and over. Like a lot of people have problems with those. Um, so we're gonna try to do that real quick. And by real quick, I mean quick enough. Um, you know, think like Sailor Moon, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, or whatever. Uh, and this was suggested by uh, Skiyoshi. Uh, but I know other people have had this issue too. Even I struggle with this one sometimes. But it's all about building up. So, I don't really care about the back of the hair for this one. Um, I'm going to come over here and make sure I'm on a straight. I'm going to get like an average thickness and width just to have it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of make some anime bangs. Yeah, that should be fine to start off with. Um, also, let me offset this so they are all that lighter color I have. Um, and now at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna just add a new freehand group and we're gonna kind of layer a little bit. So you can layer in two ways. You can either come out or you can go in and I'm gonna try to go in which is a little bit more of a challenge. Nope, I want this one, please. So we're gonna just slowly kind of pull this in. Yes. And then we're just gonna kind of pull this out a little bit. So you can kind of see like there's this... where the forehead hair is gonna kind of come in from. And we're gonna do this like a few times, so... like I said... You know, uh, so, yeah, we're just going to kind of go like this. And then I'm going to have to adjust this because I made this come up a little too high, which is okay. And I'm going to also make this much uh, thinner as far as the thickness goes. Uh, and I might even just like duplicate it because it might be easier. I don't know yet. We'll we'll find out. Uh, there's actually two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you both ways, but I'm gonna show you this way first because it's the way that a lot of people seem to wanna know how to do it. And that's mostly just taking these points and. Pulling them down and doing layers on layers and... Mm. 
and pull that forward a little bit. Well, actually, maybe we won't pull that forward a little bit. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble seeing what I'm doing because of the other hairs in the way, but it's okay. We get there in the end, or we get something as close as possible. Uh, for these, maybe I'll pull them up a little bit. I do want to kind of make these into a point because we are kind of getting to that where we're going to start making it look more like how it should in like an anime or something, you know? And then we have, oops, wrong one, this one. I'm gonna kind of pull in back here. We're just gonna sort of adjust. It's a little thick. I'm gonna like make it not as thick. Or maybe not as wide either. Uh, wide's also the problem. I'm gonna taper these two in. And for this one, I, I'm gonna thicken it up just a little bit. I'm gonna use it to kind of like hide some things back here. I need this to come forward just a smidgen. Yeah, a little bit more. And this is how to do it with just hair. And at this point I would also uh, change these colors. So let's grab this group and make sure we have our offset. Oh, is it not doing individually? I guess it's not doing individually. We want it darker. So. Sometimes you can't change the whole group at once, and you have to do them individually. It's a bit of a pain, but you know, it's fine. Yeah. Again, I don't really like this particular uh, hair texture. But I'm working with uh, trying to make a really involved tutorial really quickly <laughs> because I already know it's going to be very long and spending an hour to do um, uh, textures alone just doesn't seem feasible all right so mostly I'm just kind of adjusting to make sure I hide the hair underneath but basically that's how you would do it and if you wanted to come down more you can just keep adding like groups. And the reason I'm adding groups is so that you don't see that gap. Uh, because if not, you will see a gap. Oh, I didn't mean to add a freehand group. That's silly of me. Let's just do a duplicate layer and we're going to pull it out and we're going to pull it down. Kind of like that. Yeah. And sometimes if you really want, you can just duplicate the layer and then just add a little bit of like gray to it to make it like nice and dark. If you really want it to have that contrast. Um, sometimes I've, I've done this. It, it is a little bit more tedious, but it does give you a bit more control than trying to add it onto the one, one group and then you can do multiples and looking as dark as you want. But this is one way to do it. So it looks like you have that like big swoop. And you can just do one side or the other. You don't have to do both. But I'm doing both because that's how I remember Sailor Moon being and yeah. Uh, the other way if you don't want to do it this way is if you go over to the face editor we're going to just draw it on the texture. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to kind of grab a color that I think works. Let me make sure mirror mode's on. Alright, and I just kind of found the part where I want my part to be, and then I just kind of like zigzag it off and start my, uh, my coloring. And so I'm just going to kind of color this in 
And I make sure I'm on a new layer because I don't want to accidentally mess up and then like ruin my skin layer. Alright, so this is kind of ish the shape. I'm gonna right click and alpha lock, which if you didn't know you could do, you could do. And then I'm just gonna kind of like add in like some other shapes and stuff. And you can do it right on this, the head, um, but I do it here and I just kind of go back and check every once in a while. I'm kind of blending a little bit. And again, this is just kind of something quick and I'm rushing through. So like that, so you kind of get the same feel of the up and over. Um, and at this point you probably don't even need this this high up. You can pull it down a little bit. So you have it that way or you can have it, you know, with the actual hair. It's your choice. But that's how I do that kind of hair. Uh, but I would continue. Like, I would do all the way around. Um, and if you have this, this also helps. Yeah, new layer. We're gonna change it to a purple that'll match what we need. And then that'll also kind of kind of work, but sometimes it's really hard to adjust these textures, so I don't usually recommend it. But it is an option. But that's how I do the the swoop hair. Um, yeah. As far as other hair types, I think this mostly covers everything. Uh, we did talk about long hair briefly. As in just making this longer. And I've done hair tutorials on making long hair. It's not hard, uh, especially with this procedural group. It's fairly easy. And I'm gonna just kind of position uh, the hair behind the shoulders. So I usually have it wrap around the head and then come back behind the shoulders and then I arc. Oops. I always forget which one's which because they've named them all the same thing. Right, and then I had a freehand group that matches and then I just fill in the gaps of where hair is. So if I'm seeing skin, I feel like I've done something wrong. I'm like, this isn't clean, but we can clean this up. Just, uh... And I guess I could kind of make it part where that is, but I'm gonna kind of keep it where it is here. Uh, actually, if I turn the mirror off, I can offset it to zigzag. I'm kind of pointed a little bit. I guess this is something else that people might ask about. Very 90s, 2000s. Uh, and for this, I would probably make this also not as thick. Since I'm using it mostly to cover up, I tend to like tuck it in under the hair as much as possible. Uh, usually just enough thickness so it doesn't show scalp. It's very, very like 90s. 2000s anime style hair. I don't think you really see it too much anymore. I could round it off. It'd be a little better, I guess, if it's rounded off. 
And we'll just pull that out like that. I don't know. Alright, Gucci. <laughs> it's fucking... Yeah. Alright, so I do need to pull this out a little bit. It's, it's, it's really just uh, little adjustments and trial and error. Blah, 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 blah. Also, I would definitely fix not having it go over the ears, but you know what? This video has gone on. I've been recording for over two hours. Uh, it, you won't see it that long, but I'm getting tired. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, this is pretty much how you would do hair. I, I've touched on a little bit of everything. At this point, just these are the basics you need to know. Um, that don't require you to take it into anywhere else. So if you apply like hair down here, it's going to move away from the body. And I can do that real quick. Add freehand group. We're just going to like take this down here. And we have these hearts still, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's those hearts. Now if we, um, if we start walking, they're not going to stay there on the person. They're gonna just kind of move around because they think it's part of the head, like it's hair. Uh, that needs to be reattached, and for the, also we didn't put bones in the hair, which is why it looks like it does. Um, and that's a different tutorial. Go find my animal ears and tails tutorial to learn how to do that. Uh, but for the most part, that's it for this tutorial. I think, I think I've touched on enough. We'll just give them this one. <laughs> This is one I made before. Um, I have a tutorial on how I made this hair. I also have it up for sale. Also, if you're interested, the top is up for sale over on my booth. I think the stockings are too, along with a bunch of different other ones. The skin, the eyes, the eyelashes. Some of the lips are for free over on my booth, so you can go check it out. So if you don't want to have to deal with any of that. Anyways, thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope it's helped you with all your hair issue problem needs in order to learn how to properly hair in Vroid. Please don't ask me to make a particular tutorial on a particular hairstyle because I won't do it. I'm trying to move away from Vroid tutorials because I feel at this point I've touched on everything. Maybe I'll make another tutorial when the new Vroid comes out, but until then, thank you so much. Give a like, comment, subscribe, really helps me out. Share this, you know, real, you know, you want you want to help support me and you don't want to do it monetarily. Sharing really helps with the algorithm, so does commenting and liking and all that other jazz. So thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Alright, bye!